So in this video, we're going to be looking at George Ford. So it's another video in our Pro in Focus uh, series. Uh, so basically, uh, what we're going to look at now is how does George Ford boss the game and like what makes him such a good fly half like he's not first choice at England but he's a really good attacking fly half so I just thought it'd be quite a nice video to show you guys from the line out the English spread the ball to the left Alex Dunbar allowed Jonathan Joseph run past him and clear and Stuart Hogg couldn't get across on time it was the perfect start for Eddie Jones men Owen Farrell was past fit to play, having missed training during the week. He put the conversion over for an early 7-0 lead. So in this first image, uh, it's not really George Ford in his health, but it's his ability to pick the first, the right pass. So as you can see, he's got enough options. He's sitting uh, where that blue line starts. So the, blue to red to blue again that's his line so that red gives him the option of either passing or running around the back so he passes it at that point and then he has the option of those two runners coming up the same defender and it's just his communication to pick that right pass and it leads to the first England try against Scotland so uh, I'm going to be releasing hopefully another video on that where I'll look at those three tries in a lot of detail because they're all exactly the same move but we've got to push on because we're time limited and you don't want to sit in front of your computer for half an hour listening to me if we're honest do we two more penalties from Farrell left it at 13 points to nil before England struck in devastating style to notch their second try and put real daylight between themselves and the Scots Farrell to Ford and on to Joseph who darted away for his and England's second try of the day. So in this image now we can see that George Ford is again, he has the same runners in each direction. There's still that runner coming hard back towards where the ball's coming from. Someone looping around the back and someone targeting that outside centre. And... There's actually two because George Ford, because Orion Farrell's got the ball at the point, George Ford, who's running that direct line, is actually able to target that outside centre, inside centre gap, and it just causes problems. And that two, George Ford, the problem is, because he's a very attacking fly half, you kind of need that centre communication. So if you have that, then it enables him to use his talents better and attack the loose defenders. Another Farrell penalty made it 23-7 before a third try just short of half time put England comfortably ahead. Joseph again displaying wonderful running skills and with Bath teammate Anthony Watson on his shoulder in support it was another try. Watson had come on. So in this third example from the same game uh, it's not exactly the same move but it's still targeting exactly the same area and George Ford is able to pick out Jonathan Jove. Joseph so he can set up the third try for his team and if you look at this George Ford has the pass flat to Jonathan Joseph so he could accelerate it onto it at pace and the England back line is still able to get round and it means Anthony Watson just goes over as easy as you like as if there was no opposition there so that pass picking the right man Using that decoy runner effectively enables George Ford to actually boss the game for England. England start to give the world a pack of shot. Away. And there goes Haskell. James Haskell stepping. In goes Youngs. Good control by Cruz. That was not easy as it came back to him. England sensing here. May have missed the penalty. But they might leave with a whole lot more. George Ford wide, Marlon Yard. Anyone can score it from there. So, from a new game, this is uh, one of the key games that cemented Eddie Jones as England coach and showed how good a coach he is because of the scoreline from England. But uh, George Ford here, he 
has three options and he's identified where the space is and you might expect someone who's not got the confidence or the skill to pass it to the second man across but George Ford nice pass it means Marlon Yard is able to run straight onto it and is actually able to score the try without even breaking stride so that's a really good skill for a fly half to have that long pass so that you can really boss the game tail this time in finding Courtney Laws Billy Vonopolo oh that's nice and Ford to Yard Brown outside Johnny May back in the side is he back in the corner So again, this is another back move by England in which George Ford is remarkably easily able to pick out the right man and it actually leads to England scoring the try. And there's so many options there, it's actually quite difficult to read it because I'm not looking at the right thing that pissed it up. But he's, George Ford is actually able to find out who needs the ball and is able to identify the right runner by holding his depth and attacking the space where it appears. That was brilliantly taken. Yeah, it was an excellent kick from George Ford as well after a really strong carry by Houston. Look at that, lands it right between the two. Now, this is one of George Ford's best games he's ever played for Bath. Uh, and he absolutely bosses Toulon around. And that is because of his kicking game. He had a marvellous kicking game during this game. And as you can see, where that circle is, it's on the 22 metre line and it's judged to perfection, meaning that uh, I think it's Banahan is on the wing. He can actually jump up and compete for the ball. And James O'Connor, the fullback, actually does really well in dealing with that because it's a really good kick by George Ford into that problematic area just outside the 22 on the line so they can't call a mark and they have to be completely sure with their catching cook delivers to ford and again it's banahan and now back to ford and that was really nicely done and drop goal from ford who had all the time in the world to pick his spot and drop a couple of sugars into his coffee so, in yet another image from that dominant George Ford performance, uh, he's able to identify where the space is. So, he makes a pass there along that red line. And then he is actually able, because that defender splits the line, he then actually chases up on the inside and gets the ball back. And that's really good because if you make one break and you've got support with you, it just becomes a two on one against the fullback. Or uh, like a three on one if you've got enough support there. And because it's close to the breakdown, the forwards are still having to wrap around the corner. And Bath are able just to pick that hole and go quite a way downfield. Now Ford, drop goal. Perhaps it's on its way. He's already got one. And he has got two. And George Ford is having the game of his season so far. Well, that. Now, another key aspect of that Bath win was their drop goals. So, in this clip, uh, not in this clip, but in this entire video is two. Uh, but they're exactly the same. He positions himself deep. And in this one, the defence doesn't even bother to chase up. He's got them. They're going backwards anyway. So, there's only one defender putting pressure on him. He's got enough time to set himself and kick the post. And just knowing when to take those opportunities. Because... The score is only 3-3 and it's only 27 minutes in, but you still, if you if you don't feel as a fly half that you're going to score within the next like seven phases or five phases, just take the points if you're a strong enough drop kicker or even just put it in, put it in the corner and just keep them under pressure because the more mistakes, the more time they're in the 22, the more likely they are to make mistakes. Oh, no, Doing his best to wrestle that ball back. It's a ferocious contest for it. Ford looking for Banahan, who has to come in field a little bit to find the ball. Oh, wonderful to Lowe. Hooper was up in support. Lowe couldn't get the ball away. And like I said, George Ford is really good with those drop goals. So it's now 6 6 after Talon have closed the gap. And it's only one minute after half time. He stepped back into that pocket 
and taking the points. Good drop kicking. This time, though, there's more, a bit more pressure on him. But the pass just comes in. He sets himself, gets it away. And it's an easy three points. Midway pass. through the half, the visitors edged in front. They were peppering the Welsh line. And Rob Howley's men were doing well to hold them out. But after 26 phases, they were lacking bodies at the fringe as Ben Youngs picked and dived for the line. A clever finish from the Leicester scrum half. So this is a game, I think, personally, England were lucky to win because Wales played incredibly well, but George Ford was able to just boss the game and create lots of scoring opportunities for England. So this is leading up to the Ben Young's try where he passes it wide enough using those because look how deep he's actually standing from the ruck he's standing a good 10 meters back because if you look wide there's not enough there's not enough Welsh defenders out there and he's also got the cover inside of the forward so it just enables him to manage the game a lot better because he's got more time on the ball. England on match day one against France and having come on as a substitute again, he looked dangerous as he split the Welsh defence before passing to Danny Kerr. The danger on this occasion was averted, but the warning signs were there. And five minutes from time came the crucial... Uh, sorry about the end of that clip, because it was a bit annoying that it cut to the wrong part of the video. Uh, I won't edit it down because I've spoken to you about it now, but... In this image, look at where his forwards are. He's got one coming on the inside to target the guy in front of him. Justin Tupperick is there to cover. He's in the blue scrum cap. But there's two forward runners running into that hole between Justin Tupperick, the defender, and then I think it's Dan Bigger. And that means that Dan Bigger has to turn in his shoulder, which means that Owen Farrell, who's standing around the 10 metre line, uh, no, sorry, the halfway line, about five meters further, like five meters back from George Ford, has that additional time. But if you roll back the video, George Ford is actually standing a lot deeper when he picks up the ball and is able to attack the space, which fixes those three defenders in and increases the speed out wide. Sorry, not not speed, uh, space out wide, which obviously enables more attacking opportunities. Hello. Jonathan Davies failed to find touch with his clearing kick and when Ford raced back alarm bells were ringing in the Welsh defence Farrell moved the ball wide to Daly who raced outside Cuthbert and over the line So this is when George Ford was able to win the game for England Wales are ahead by two points but he puts he starts the chain reaction that leads to Elliot Daly going in in the corner because if you look at where he started, he started on around the 10 metre line, a bit further back actually, and then has attacked that space and is actually running diagonally to shorten his path length to Farrell. So it's a good, I'd say around a 20 metre path to Farrell and then another 20 metre path to Daly. And it ends up England scoring in the corner and winning the game. So that long pass again is being shown and also the fact that he's identifying where the space is and running towards it, but still passing and not going glory hunting. Before it's hit the deck, now England have got it. And away goes Ford! Oh, care it is! Danny Kerr out to Launchbury. And England now can just close it out if they want to. Haskell to Ford. He kicks across, and the chase is on. Jack now gets the bounce, and England have broken their drop in Brisbane at long last. Uh, so in this final image that I've got for you, again, it's the England v Australia game. Sorry about the narrowness of the uh, video, but I've just got it off YouTube, so all rights reserved, obviously, but I'll come on to that a bit later when I finish sum up. But George Ford has identified where the space is, but because of his run and the fact that he's got Jonathan Joseph on his shoulder, the two Australians very close, and Jack Knoll in the blue scrum hat on the bottom of your screen is outside his defender, which means he can actually exploit the space in behind and is able to score in the corner. And the preciseness of the kick gives Jack Knoll a fighting chance. And Jack Knoll, it's a wonderful finish by him, but it all comes from the kick and the run by George Ford. Really, just to sum up, uh, 
George Ford's kicking and running game can really help. But the main thing really is to work on, if you haven't got it, is your game management and your passing skills. Uh, so that basically sums it up. All rights reserved. I definitely recommend going to the RBS Six Nations uh, highlights account. Oh, or just their YouTube account and looking at the highlights of some of those games. Uh, it just shows you the best bits of the game. So if you haven't got time to watch or don't feel like watching an entire hour's worth of game, you can just go there and find some good highlights and tries. And if you want, just try and pick out those patterns so you see in the best player or pick a position, say you play flanker, try and track where the flanker is in each move and see if you can bring that into your game. But thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe and turn that notification icon on. It helps a lot and also I like people watching the videos because I feel better about myself as a person. But if you have any ideas for a video, either contact me on Instagram or uh, comment down below. Well, enjoy the rest of your week and goodbye.